Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering AWS reInvent 2017. Presented by AWS, Intel, and our ecosystem of partners. And it's actually a little quieter hey, here. Welcome back to AWS. Reinvent 2017, I'm Lisa Martin. We're all very chatty. You can hear a lot of chatty folks behind us. This is day two of our continuing coverage. 42,000 people here, amazing. I'm Lisa Martin with my co-host Keith Townsend and we're very excited to be joined by a CUBE alumni, Bob Muglia, CEO and president of Snowflake. Welcome back. Thank you, good to be back. And Kelly Munger, the director of enterprise data and analytics from Lionsgate, a great use case uh, from Snowflake. Thanks so much guys for joining us. So one of the hot things going on on today at, at the event is your announcement, Bob, uh, with AWS and Snowpipe. What is Snowpipe? How do customers get started with it? Great. Well, thanks. We're excited about Snowpipe. Snowpipe is a way of ingesting data into Snowflake in a streaming, continuous way. You know, you simply can drop new data that's coming in into S3 and we'll ingest it for you automatically. Makes that super, super simple. Brings the data in continuously into your data warehouse, ensuring that you're always up to date and your analysts are getting the latest insights and the latest data. So when you guys were founded about five years ago, you are, as your marketing says on the website, a complete data warehouse built for the cloud. What was the opportunity back then? What did you see that was missing and how has Snowflake evolved to really be a leader in this space? So you know, if you go back five years, this was a time frame where NoSQL was the big rage and everybody was talking about how SQL was passe and, 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 and something that you're not going to see in the future. Our founders had a different view. They had been working on true relational databases for almost 20 years and they recognized the power of SQL and relational technology, but they also saw that customers were experiencing significant limits with existing technology, and, and those limits really restricted what people could do. They saw in the cloud, and what Amazon had done, the ability to build an all new database that takes advantage of the full elasticity and power of the cloud to deliver whatever set of analytics capabilities that the business requires. However much data you want, however many queries simultaneously, Snowflake takes what you love about a relational database and removes all the limits and allows you to operate in a very different way. And our founders had that vision five years ago and really successfully executed on it. The product has worked beyond our dreams and, and our customers, our response from our customers is what you know, we get so excited about. So the saying is data is the new oil. However, just as oil is really hard to drill for and find, finding the data to service up, to even put in a data lake to analyze has yeah. been a challenge. How did you guys go about identifying what data should even be streamed to no pipe. Well, yeah, that, that's, a, that's a great question. I mean, uh, in entertainment today, we're experiencing probably like in a, a, a pretty much every uh, uh, type of business, a data explosion. We're, we, we have, uh, you know, streaming is big now. We have subscription data coming in, billing data, social media data, and, uh, and on and on. And the thing is, it's not coming in a normal, regular format. It's coming in what we call semi-structured, structured, JSON, XML. So uh, up until Snowflake came onto the scene with uh, a truly uh, 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 cloud-based SaaS solution for data warehousing, uh, pretty much everyone was struggling to wrangle in all these data sets. Snowpipe is a great example of uh, one of the avenues of bringing these multiple data sets, merging them real time, and, and uh, getting the analytics out to your business uh, uh, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a, an agile way that has never been seen before. So can you talk a little bit about that experience, kind of that day one after you've taken these this separate data sources, whether it's e, uh, ERP solution, uh, uh, data from, from, from original content, munging that together and then being able to analyze that. What was that day one experience like? Well, you know, I got to tell you, it evolves around a word. That word is yes, okay? <laughs> and uh, uh, and, 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 the, and uh, data architects and executives and, and, and leaders within you know, pretty much every company are used to saying, we'll get to that. It, we'll, it's, we'll put it on the, uh, the road map. Uh, we can do that six months out, three months out. So what happened when I implemented, implemented Snowflake was um, I was just walking into meetings and going, yes, you got it. <laughs> no worries, <laughs> let's do it. It's liberating. And, well, it changes. It's not only liberating, it, it, it changes uh, uh, the individual's opportunities, the, the team's opportunities, 
uh, the company's opportunities and ultimately revenue. So I, I, I think it's just an, an amazing new way of approaching data warehousing. So Bob, can you talk a little bit about the partnership with AWS and the power to bring that type of capability to customers? Data, data leaks are really hard to, to do that type of thing, run a, a query against and get instant answers. Talk about the partnership with AWS to bring that type well, to Well, Amazon's been a fantastic partner of ours, and we, you know, we really enjoy working with Amazon. You know, we wind up working together with them on, to solve customer problems, which is what I think is, is so fantastic. And, and you know, with Snowflake, on top of Amazon, you can do what Kelly's saying. You can say yes, because all of a sudden, you can now bring all of your data together in one place. Technology has limited. It's technology that has caused data to be in disparate silos. People don't want their data all scattered all over the place. It's all in these different places because limits to technology force people to do that. With the cloud, and with Am what Amazon's done, and with a product like Snowflake, you can bring all of that data together. And the thing that's interesting where Kelly is going is, is it can change the culture of a company and the way people work. All of a sudden, data is not power. Data is, is, is available to everyone and it's democratized and every person can work with data and help to bring the business forward. And it, it can really change the dynamics about the way people work. And Kelly, you just spoke at uh, the multi-city cloud analytics tour that Snowflake just did. You spoke in Santa Monica, one of my favorite places. Um, you talked about a data-driven culture. We hear data-driven in so many different conversations, but how, do you, how did you actually go about facilitating a data-driven culture? Who are the, some of the early adopters and what business problems have you been able to solve by saying yes? Well, you know, uh, it, uh, I, I can speak to, in general, entertainment in general. Uh, I think that, uh, you know, it's, it's all about technology, it's about talent, and it's about teaching. And um, uh, with technology being the core of that. So, uh, uh, and if we go back five years, six years, seven years, um, it's, it was really hard to walk into a room, uh, have an idea, a concept, uh, around social media, around um, uh, 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 streaming data, around uh, uh, billing, around accounting, and to, to have an agile approach that could come, uh, that you could bring together within a week or, or so forth. So what's happening is, now that we've implemented uh, 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 Snowflake on AWS, and some of the other, what I call dream tools on top of that, the dream stack, which includes uh, Snowflake, um, it's, it's, it's more about iterating with the business. Now we can speak the same language with them. Now we can walk into a room and they're glad to see me now. And, 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 uh, and at the end of the day, uh, uh, it's, it's new, it's all new. So I, I say, this is something that I say sometimes and, and kidding, but it's actually true. It's as if Snowflake had a time traveler on staff that went forward in the future 10 years to determine how things should be done in the big data space and then came back and developed it. And that's how futuristic they are, but proven at the same time. Uh, and, uh, and that allows us to, to, to cultivate that data-driven data culture within entertainment because we have tools and we have the, uh, the agile approach that the business is looking for. So Kelly, I'm really interested and I love the concept of making data available to everyone. That's been a theme of this conference from uh, the keynote this morning, which is making, putting tools in builders' hands now on builders to do what they do. That's and right. we're always surprised at what users come back with. What's one of the biggest surprises from the use cases that now that you've enabled your well, I'm going to give you one that's based on AWS and, and Snowflake. And um, you know, it, uh, it, uh, a catchphrase you hear a lot of is data center of excellence. And a lot of us are trying to build out these data centers of excellence. But it's a little bit of uh, 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 an oxymoron to the fact that a data center of excellence is really about enabling your business and, and finding champions within, within marketing, within sales, within accounting, and giving them the ability to, to, to have self-service uh, business intelligence, self-service data warehousing. The kinds of things that, again, we go back five, six years ago, you couldn't even have that conversation. Um, I'll tell you today, I can walk into a room and, and, and say, okay, who here, is interested in learning about data warehousing. <laughs> and, and you know, there'll be somebody, oh great, great. Within an hour, I'll have you uh, uh, being 
dangerous in terms of, of, of setting up, standing up, configuring, and loading a data warehouse. That's unheard of. Yeah. And it's all uh, due to Snowflake and their new technology, so. I'd love to understand, Bob, from your perspective. First of all, it sounds like you have a crystal ball, according to Kelly, which is awesome. <laughs> uh, but second of all, uh, collaboration, we talked about that earlier. Andy Jassy is very well known and very vocal about visiting customers every week. And I love their bottom, their backwards approach to before building a product to try to see what problem can we solve, they're actually working with customers first. What's the problem, what are their requirements? Tell me a little bit, Bob, about the collaboration that Snowflake has with Lionsgate or other customers. How are they helping to influence your, your future, your crystal ball? No, I, this is where I think what Amazon has done, and, and, and Andy has done a fantastic job, there's so much to learn from, from them, and the customer centricity that Amazon has always had is something that we have really focused to bring into Snowflake and really build deeply into our culture. I've sort of said many, many times, Snowflake is a values-based company. Our values are important to us, they're prominent on our website. Our first value is we put our customers first. We are, what I'm most proud of is we've Every customer who is focused on deploying Snowflake has successfully deployed Snowflake. And we learn from them, we engage with them, we partner with them. All of our customers are our partners. Kelly and Lionsgate are examples of customers that we learn from every day. And it's such a rewarding thing to hear what they want to do. You look at Snowpipe and what Snowpipe is, that came from customers. We learned that from customers. You look at so many features, so many details. It's iterative learning with customers. And you know, what's interesting about that it's listening to customers, but it's also understanding what they do. One of the things that's, that's interesting about Snowflake is, is that as a company, we run Snowflake on Snowflake. All of our data is in Snowflake. All of our sales data, our financial data, our, our marketing data, our product support data, our engineering data. Every time a user runs a query, that query is logged in Snowflake and intrinsics about it are logged. So what's interesting is because it's all in one place and it's all accessible, we can answer essentially any question about what's been done. And then driving the culture to do that is an important thing. One of the things I do find interesting is even at Snowflake, even at this data-centric company, even where everything is all centralized, I still find sometimes people don't reference it. And you know, I'm constantly reinforcing that your intuition, you know, you're really smart, you're really intuitive, but you could be wrong. And if, the if you can answer the question based on what's happened, what your customers are doing, because it's in the data and you can get that answer quickly, right. it's a totally different world. And that's what, what you can do when you have a tool with the power of what Snowflake can deliver, is you can answer effectively any business question in just a matter of minutes. And that's transformative. It's transformative to the way people work. And that, you know, to me, that's about what it means to build a data-driven culture, is to reinforce that the answer is, from, is inside what customers are doing, and so often that is encapsulated in the data. Wow, your energy is, <laughs> is incredible. We thank you so much, Bob and Kelly, for coming on and sharing your story, and, and I think a lot of our viewers are going to learn some great lessons from both of you uh, on collaboration, on transformation. So thanks so much for stopping by. Thank you so much, really enjoyed it. Thanks Likewise, a lot. It's great to meet thanks, you. Kelly. Thank you. For my co-host, Keith Townsend, and for Kelly and Bob, I'm Lisa Martin. You've been watching theCUBE live on day two, continuing coverage at AWS reInvent 2017. Stick around, we have great more guests coming up.